Dominic Cooper, why are you leading a series for the first time? Um, why am I? Why? Because I got asked to lead one for the first time. Oh no, I haven't done it yet. Why? Why had I not done it before? I think this was the first series I'd read that I thought um, what a wonderful opportunity to play out a lot of um, a lot of different things that I've always dreamt of playing out in one um, in one particular show. Um, again, I just get the opportunity to do so much different. Um, so many different things in, in, in the space of a day. Um, and I love the, yeah, I love, I love the, the, the concept behind it. I love the original content and I uh, thought it'd be a good opportunity and a, and a big challenge to play someone very far from anything I've ever played before. And were you and Ruth Nega a package deal for the show? <laughs> were we packed it? No, no, absolutely not. We, um, I, I found, I did find out about, I don't actually, I'd heard about Preacher. I'd heard, I'd, uh, there was, there were rumors circulating about the script. But I managed to, um, I, it was definitely her copy of that script, which I first saw. Um, and in fact, I think there's a, there's an early audition, there's an early, tape that I have somewhere of me reading in this <laughs> before I think I was reading in for her to do one of the auditions and um before and then I think I did yeah, in that terrible manner I sort of got got wind of it and, and sort of thought oh this is I like I like the sound of this <laughs> and then uh approached various people so uh, yeah that's I think I think that's how it unfolded and how I learned about it but no we weren't a package deal <laughs> So well, you guys have things together. So uh, they seem to have done a lot of um, done a lot of plays and TV shows and films together, which is very, very odd, but all coincidence. So you're actually shooting the second season right now. Uh, you might get whisked away any moment to go back to filming. Uh, when you guys started the season, it was about a week after the Oscar nominations had come out. So was there any sort of celebration for her? Yes. Like on the set, I mean. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think we had no. Uh, I was, when did they come out? I'm trying to remember. Um, when have they come out? With, whether we were on set? I don't know whether we were still filming, were we? I can't. Yes, there was big celebrations. Although it's one of those things that it's very hard to. Kind of, I think uh, it, the, the lead up to those nominations is so fraught with expectation and then dealing with I suppose emotion of it might not be happening and there's so many different awards that take place between them that it's I think you have to come to terms with it might not be it not being a possibility so you just it's a very you don't it's not all whoop whoop and joy it's kind of wow that's actually something that's, ha that's happening and then it's a slow burn of amazement at what an achievement it is I think more than, more than like an, an, a, a huge Moment, momentary party. I think it's, it takes a while to sink in. I in fact, I don't think she, I don't think Ruth knew about it until the following day. Or something like that. I can't quite remember. I'm sure you're in England. Are you sure you're filming? Yeah, we were filming. Okay. All right. Uh, so, where are you sitting right now? I take it this is a set that's not being used today. This is a set that's not being used today. This is the apartment um, that's going to that's going to be the basis of a lot of. Um, yeah, this next season. There's a lot. A lot goes on in here. I don't know how much I can say about. How much can I say about? It's coming out. out to, yeah. So this is um. This is somewhere in New Orleans that, that Cassidy's taken us to to stay in. That's part of his background and his history. That we discover. We discover who the man is who lives in here, and uh, this is like our base. This is our. This is our home. For this season. I don't know how much of it you can see, but it's you know, it's like an old. It's one of those wonderful. It's been built so well, designed so well. But, um, yeah, it's all interconnecting rooms that we, yeah, a lot, a lot of the scenes. I've spent a lot of time in here over the last three or four months. And what can you tell us about the second season more generally? Um, it's much more, it's much more closely related to the comics in terms of its source material. So what I've, I've had, a, a, it's been terribly exciting, confronting and coming face to face with a lot of the characters um, that I remember from the original comic. Uh, the, this, we, we left the last season with this quest for God, this missing entity that Jesse's desperate to find and desperately seeking answers from. 
Um, that's certainly um, Jesse's paramount objective. And it's, I think you see slowly the deterioration of a group of friends who are under immense pressure and who are having to make very difficult decisions about their friendship, about what they're striving for, about the chaos they get into with, with one another, about the lies they tell one another. Um, and thrown into that mix, we have elements of the past, such as Eugene and, and yeah, I think, I don't know, can we, can we say anything about any of the characters or anything? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay. It was very exciting people from very distinctive people from the comic books who um, I certainly remember and, and stuck out in my in my memory from first reading it that would be that those three that us three would get confronted with and it becomes very dangerous and it, and it damages the relationship and the relationships get frayed and deteriorate and, and spiral out of control. There are a lot of adaptations these days that are being, that are adapting kind of source material that's still in progress, like, you know, The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones, or even like something like Justified. I remember reading a lot about how uh, Elmore Leonard was kind of reshaping the characters in his books based on how people in the show were playing them. But you don't really have that because uh, the comics are all done. Uh, but I am wondering about how has your performance changed as you've read more of them, as I understand that you weren't familiar with them when you first signed on. I'd read, I'd, I'd read all of them, and I continue yeah. to read all of them, but I, how it's developed more, it's, a, it's an ever-evolving process in terms of how the writers are writing for you or where your character's heading, and, and it's, that's a constant dialogue and a constant conversation of sometimes things don't quite feel right or things stick out. Not often, because they've been watching everything, and, and they're quite good at guiding um, your personality or who they think you are in the right direction. It's... Um, it's funny though how I think, yeah, just the choices that have been made by the, certainly by the writers of, of who, who they are and where they think they're going. But it, it, from the person that I was or that I knew Jesse to be at the beginning, like any being, like, a, like he's, cha he, he's been confronted with things that have either damaged him or changed him or changed his way of thinking. But it, ultimately the heart of who this person is is a very complicated, guilt-ridden and quite selfish man who actually, um, I think from what I can gather, seems to put his, um, the closest people to him sort of set in, in second position over his mission to appease the, the, the things that he feels guilty about his past. And I think that's his downfall actually. Um, and, some of this stuff gets discovered, some of it's stuff that you have to have stored within you or, or that you understand um, and can pull from within you in different scenes that might not re require it up front, but that you actually need to have inside of you. And I think just each episode you do, you learn something more about that person. And, and I refer back to the comics a lot, but it was never a great starting point to, to really define do this rounded to create recreate from a from a comic book a, a fully rounded fleshed out character was um was quite tough I, I i discovered much more about who he really was in the in the in the episodes that unfolded if that makes sense it was um i had a very distinct reason for being back in my hometown in the first season i wanted i desperately wanted something was in search of an idea of myself and that's now and, and, and it's ever changing the more I learn about him I go I've, I've as all the characters do I think but I go from um, feeling very positive about him on some days and that he and that he cares and he's doing the best for everyone into feeling quite negative about some of the decisions he's making and that's why the writing's so great because he's constantly in conflict with himself and and the struggle to do what's right but it's very difficult for him because he's ultimately a criminal as well. What would you say your favorite and least favorite aspects of Jesse are kind of as a person? 
Um, he's strong, he's decisive. I'd say he's trustworthy. Um, but he... I think his torment and his pain consumes him to the point that he becomes quite selfish. And I think that that that's he makes some terrible mistakes, and he makes and so, even the thing what he did in in what he did in the first season by sending Eugene to hell is 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 inexcusable and unacceptable and and unforgivable ultimately even if it was done in a fit of rage in a moment of passion but that's the truth about him he's become a hardened criminal he's not a is a he was a good boy growing up and then he did something that he can't forgive himself for and got involved in a life that wasn't necessarily right for him and didn't sue him but that was the life that he was into and then in a moment and then now he's been given this huge amount of power and I don't know who's capable of dealing with that or who has the right emotional balance to not use that to the detriment of society or people. But he, he that's also something that he's confronted with continually. And, and in that particular moment, he sent a teenage boy to, to hell for no apparent reason in, in, a, in a state of rage. And I think that that always is something that... Um, it's a problem to keep him to maintain a, a, some sort of level of charm about him because he's, he's, he's dangerous, he's volatile, and he can do some really bad things. That was annoying. That was annoying. What does it mean? That's an email. Email annoying. Yeah, uh, can you speak to uh, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg's directing style? We kind of always associate them with comedy as opposed to a drama. Yeah, they are... Um, I think that's why they also they, they very much enjoy shooting this. Uh, they they love um, they love the drama aspect of it, and I think it was really really exciting to have them back and for them to um, because they 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 were the they're, they're the ones who pushed this into being made. They 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 were the ones who were in love with this source material. They were uh, as Kids growing up, they they've been this has been their dream. So it's, I think it's very important that they were that they came back um, and put their and embedded their style on the, at the beginning again. So they directed the first two again, and uh, I think I really love the way in which they work. They uh, they're very cohesive. They don't give you opposing direction. They have a very distinctive vision. The extraordinary experience, and they know that they can. They want to make this as strange, ambiguous, and insane as it possibly can be. And if anyone can do that, I think they're the right people to achieve that those goals. And um, yeah, it's been really important, I think, for the show to have them just start us off to get the journey going. And and, um, and Seth's an actor, so he. Is very good and very specific with his notes, and knows and knows which notes really can help and which aren't very helpful. Looking back on the first season, was there a scene that was particularly memorable or uh, challenging for you to shoot? Um, a scene that was challenging. For, uh, sorry, say that again. I'm just trying to get you up the night out here. So. Oh. Oh yeah, no, I'm just wondering uh, if you could share a story about, you know, a particularly memorable scene from the first season that you shot. From the first? Yes. The first season. Um, the, the big bar fight was a very memorable day. I remember shooting that. It was very early on. I think that was actually in the pilot. Um, there's a lot of scenes. I remember a lot of the scenes in the church uh, that we had, sending Eugene to hell. Um, I tell you not, I tell you yeah. um, wow, what other scenes do I really remember? Something I spoke such a difficult question to answer on when I'm still shooting the I can't decipher the two. I think um, 
yeah, a lot of scenes I had with Cassidy talking, you know, chatting things through about our existence and, and the world and the problems with it and how different our opinions were of, of on religion and various other things. I enjoyed those scenes. But that's off the top of my head, but I'm sure I'll think about that question in a second. <laughs> Now, are there any plans for you to start singing at any point in Preacher? I doubt it very much. Okay. Oh, we do sing at the beginning, don't we? Wait and see. <laughs> there is. No, but I don't think it will become musical. Okay. Just you sing in a lot of other things, so, you know, that skill set is untapped, I feel. Oh, yeah. too many <laughs> oh, I do sing in a lot of other things, yeah. All right, and finally, uh, can you tell us what else you have coming up? Um, coming up this year, in terms of work I'm about to do or work coming out, um, I'm about to sign something I may have already done, but I haven't quite signed on to it yet, so I'm not sure. Um, that made no sense at all. That's, that's what your face was representing in the face of dismay that you didn't understand the clue. Oh no, you, your video kind of cut out for a second, so I, I, I really couldn't understand anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm all consumed with Preacher at the moment. But um, I have a, I have an a, um, improvised film um, that I did with a man named Dominic Savage coming out later this year, and a film called Stressing. And then I don't know something else. Then I'll be doing Preacher again. I'm I'm sure for before I can say Preacher. All right, exciting. All right, thanks very much, Dominic, for taking the time uh, to talk to us while you're shooting. And we look forward to seeing the second season very soon, actually. Cool, yeah, very soon. A week, is it? Yeah, nice one. Take care. Thank you for talking. <laughs>